Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, give it all praise. It's the most high Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high blesses us lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. This evening we're going to look at the uh, pentagram right here. And, you know, as we get more understanding about the adversary and how there is no truth in him then it would make sense that many of the things that he's taught us that are, are evil more than likely are things that we were accustomed to using before he came on the scene. You know, the, the enemy has really done a great job of making the things that we used to use evil. Things that we used to look to for guidance are now looked at as evil. Many people see certain you know, pictures and, and things like that, like a pentagram like this, and they think of something evil. And like the, the enemy has really gotten to a point where, you know, they just say things and the vast of the world just listens to them, but they do no research on their own. You know, was the pentagram used before the so-called Greeks and the Romans? Well, those are kind of the things that you have to kind of think about before. You know, it talks about in the uh, the book, Love, the Real Da Vinci Code by Horowitz. It goes into the pentagram on page like 91. If you happen to have like the um, the book or the PDF or anything like that. Talk about how the pentagram metaphorically represented human nature. And that pentagrams were discovered going back to 3500 B.C. Okay, so these things have been around for a very, very long time. It says historically archaeologists discovered pentagrams on Mesopotamian potsherds dating back to 3500 BC. Pentagrams appear in art from ancient Egypt, but then they throw in ancient Egypt and they put Greece and Rome because they're always trying to, you know, put themselves into the ancient times. And we know that they weren't, but that's neither here nor there. It says, reference to the pentagram in Christian writings stems from Hildegard of Bingen. The 12th century Benedictine nun perceived the pentagram. And see, they're talking about the 12th century. The 1100s was when all of a sudden they've come on the scene and they're supposedly talking about they conceived or this nun conceived of the pentagram. But there's actually records and there's actually art and things like that, potsherds with pentagrams from 3500 B.C. But see, the vast majority of the world is looking to use the definitions that the church has come up with rather, you know, recently. And that's how they've done it with many things. Just like, you know, the books that are good to use are the 66 books that the church has, you know, deemed as being appropriate. Or the 80 books you know, that, that they've deemed as appropriate. Or if they t take out 14 books and they... You know, all these things that they've been doing, they have they, they have no proof that they are in any kind of a position uh, to have that kind of authority. So when you start looking, you know, you really got to dig deep and look at these things and like, hey, what does it really mean? What did these things mean before the Greeks and the Romans? See, we're going to be moving back to how things were before, you know, the Greeks and the Romans came in and, and, and interjected themselves you know, into our reality. As you can see, every day the Most High makes them less and less significant. There are breakdowns, you know, about things. Their understanding of history. You know, we understand that th their history is pretty much them trying to uh, switch history up to make it seem as if they've always been here. That's what their whole history is about. I was just listening to uh, Sister Lisa Cabrera's video talking about Cleopatra. The, you know, the new show is going to be coming out on Netflix. 
And like she's talks, she was talking about how, you know, they're constantly trying to, you know, put themselves or interject themselves into a history that they had nothing to do with. And once you realize that they had nothing to do with our history, then why people still want to go to them in order to get approval for anything, you know, is beyond me. Makes absolutely no sense. The Most High has left clues and left information for us to be able to start to find this information and then depend on the Most High and the Holy Spirit to bring this knowledge and understanding back to us, just like he said he would in the book of John. Now it talks about the pentagram and the number five, okay? It talks about like the like a representation of the five senses. You know, uh, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. Like that's kind of, those are the kinds of things that the pentagram represented back then. Talking about the five extremities of our bodies, the two arms, the two legs, and the one head. Christians even use it talking about the five wounds of Christ when he was being crucified. You know, so these symbols had different meanings and we need to be searching for these meanings and not just be so quick to just dismiss the information and say that it's evil because I've heard that all the time. Oh, that's evil. Well, why is that evil? Who told you that that's evil? Oh, the evil church that has been doing nothing but spreading death and destruction and lies the whole time. They're the ones that told you that it's evil and you just believe them. You do no research for your own on your own. You don't look to see what was the meaning of this information before. So you got to understand that a lot of these things, a lot of these symbols that we probably used before were and it talks about how the pentagram was actually used for protection. Okay. I'm looking right here. It says that the symbol was believed to guard against evil um, elements or things like that. Evil spirits, evil elements, things like that. And what's crazy is if you go back to some of my old, older videos, I would wear a hat that had like the five-pointed star for the Houston Astros because I liked the hat. And I used to get a lot of people making comments about the five-pointed star. All the while, I didn't even realize that that was actually a symbol that our part of people had been using to ward off evil for a very long time. Now you gotta think, our enemies want us to not have any protection. So anything that we could use for protection, they are going to try to portray it as evil. If they portray the things that we use for protection as evil, then we will you know, stay away from them, stay away from that, and that there will make their job that much easier because we have less protection against the things that they want to do against us. So it seems like a, many of the things, just like looking at the stars and how that was portrayed as being something evil. But see, now, when we're watching Pluto and you're looking at, you know, how it showed up and they signed the Declaration of Independence and when Pluto showed up in a certain area, it was for their blessing. They knew that eventually that Pluto is going to come back around and it's going to be for it's going to be a representation of their downfall. And they don't want people to realize that. So then all of a sudden, look at the stars is a problem. Looking at the planets is a problem. They went so far as to say that Pluto wasn't even a planet anymore and don't pay attention anymore. You see, that's what they do. Things that are not going to be to their benefit, they try to hide or they try to diminish. And that's exactly what's been going on. So, you know, many of the things that we've been told, many of these symbols that we've been, you know, shown that have been shown to us and told that they are evil, we need to revisit that and take a look at those kinds of uh, that kind of information and see what it was before the Gentiles got their hands on it. You know, because these the pentagram had, I'm sure, a much different uh, meaning for us than it does for the other nations. Just like many things. Real prophecy in the Bible, you know, for us has a much different meaning than prophecy for the Gentiles in the Bible. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Hopefully, this is not. Okay. <laughs> so, hopefully, um, let me drop my train of thought. Was this thing jumping up, popping up here? Um, what you're seeing is that, like, like the scriptures are talking about the um, Most High's children being raised back up here at the end. And it's talking about the downfall of the people that have put us, you know, under their foot. It's talking about, so depending on your perspective, the Bible is going to be seeing, saying two totally different things. So if the Bible is saying two different things, then you realize that the Bible is not a universal book because it's not saying the same thing for everyone. Even though they've been telling us that the Bible is a universal book and it's for everyone and, you know, everyone's got the same, you know, uh, opportunities. But even in their own system, not everyone has the same opportunities. So to think that somehow if in their society they set up things to go against us as a people. They set up a whole society to keep us from knowing the truth, knowing who we are. They've set up a society and a religious system that um, keeps us from finding our way back to the Most High and tries its best to keep us under the church's thumb and trying to you know, actually listen to everything the church says and not question anything that they say. So, you know, we're going to get into more of these symbols and more of these things, just like the traffic lights in the last video. You know, the way that they set it up, they set it up so that red means stop and like you stop and think about things and really ponder things. But that's really not what red means. Red is just a representation of this matrix. And they don't want you to think about absolutely anything. They want you just to live your life and enjoy yourself and you know, don't worry about, you know, fostering a relationship with the most high. And then they make it seem as green is just go. And really the green should be stopping and doing some self-reflection and really chasing after the most high and letting him use you and work through you, which will take time and effort and a lot of study. But like I said, everything here is backwards. So if they're telling you that the pentagram is evil, is it really evil? Or is it evil to them because it's a way for us to uh, protect ourselves against the evil that they want to bring against us? So, yes, it could be evil for them because it thwarts things that they want to do to us. But it could be something positive for us because it protects us from the damage that they want to do to us. You see, that's why that's why looking at books and looking at stories the perspective of the person reading is so very important. You can't look at information and look at stories and think that, you know, it's the same for everyone because it's not. That's why many of these stories and books are hidden because if they really, if we really knew the power that we had in the past and the influence that we had in the past, we would never go to the Gentiles for absolutely anything. But they had to hide all that history so that we would feel as if we need them in order to function. Which, as you can see now, is nothing further from the truth. They need us. They need us to guide them. They need us to give them understanding of a book that was never given to them. They need us to give a breakdowns of things that they have no understanding about. That's why they go out of their way to hide everything they possibly can. But now the Most High is revealing these things to us because those are the times that we are in. So really take your time and, and delve into these different, um, different avenues and different topics and do your own research and don't depend on your adversaries to tell you the truth. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.